Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Today sees the launch of the next Creative Arts collaboration and the hashtag is LoveFallArt. And I'm also guest designing for Indigo Blue, quintessentially English rubber stamps. And my project today is called Summer's End. So I'm beginning my project with a six inch deep canvas. It's a gallery wrap canvas and I'm using the Indigo Blue English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paint and this colour is called Townhouse Teal and I'm covering the entire of my canvas with this acrylic paint. Once the canvas is completely covered I only need the one coat because these paints are very um, well, quite thick so you only really need one coat to cover and once it's all done and I'm also going to do the sides and a little way around the back I'm going to bring out the heat gun and give it a real good blast to make sure everything is nice and dry. As I've said, these paints are quite thick, which is because they don't have any water and they have no fillers and they're extremely pigment rich. And as true acrylic paints, they can also be used as fabric paints too. You can machine wash them and they won't wash out. So I've covered the entire canvas with a single coat of that townhouse teal acrylic blue and now I'm just going to bring out the heat gun and give it a real good blast. So now that it's all nice and dry I'm going to put it to one side and I'm going to bring out the burning bonfire which is exactly the same range of paints and this is a beautiful sort of burnt orange colour and I'm going to take three pieces of card and I'm going to randomly apply the paint along with banana custard there you go and I'm going to just apply both colors across this piece of card in just broad brush strokes randomly uh, I'm not looking for anything blended I'm just looking for really sort of artistic um, painterly strokes across these pieces of card and I'm going to do three pieces exactly the same um, I'm only ever going to use two, but I've got one just in case I make a mistake. So there are my three pieces of card. They're about five inches square. As I said, I'm only going to use two of them. So I'm going to put those to one side and bring back my canvas. Now this is the Indigo Blue English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paint again. And this time the colour is called Park Lane, which is a kind of... Um, purpley blue if you like and I'm going to mix that with some embossing paste so I'm going to mix the paint and the embossing paste all together until I've got a nice even color and then I'm going to bring out one of the new indigo blue stencils which is called textures and I'm going to put that embossing paste through the stencil onto the front of my canvas and down all four sides. And there's the stencil. I'm going to use a wide spatula because I want a nice broad stroke and get as much of that embossing paste through the stencil in one go. So once I'm happy with the embossing paste on the sides of the canvas, I'm going to bring out the heat tool and just give it a quick heat blast and then I'm going to pop the canvas to one side and bring back the three pieces of card. Now this is a technique that I'm going to do in a second that I haven't done on film before. So for the first time I'm going to bring out my gilding flake. So first step is take a piece of what they call fat foam which is like a cut and dry, almost the same sort of thing and their flitter glue, Indigo Blue's flitter glue. And I'll put about a teaspoon onto a piece of the fat foam and using the spatula, I'm just gonna work that flitter glue into the foam. So kind of creating a glue pad. So you can see I'm just working that glue into the foam so it all sinks away from the surface and actually into the foam itself. I'm gonna place it upside down on my craft mat to make sure that it doesn't dry out. 
So here you can see I'm using the large sunflower stamp from Indigo Blue and it's brand new, it's never been used before. So I'm going to just take it out of the packet and then just trim it off with a pair of scissors all the way around to remove any excess. I'm just going to place the stamp face down onto the card just to make sure that I have actually cut it at the right size. So I'm bringing out my stamp press and then just placing the stamp onto the stamp press and then using the pad with the glue I'm just going to go around as you would normally ink up the stamp and go all over the stamp with that flitter glue. Once the glue's on there I'm going to leave it for a minute or two just to set a little bit just so it goes tacky and then I'm going to stamp the sunflower onto all three pieces of card one at a time I'll do it and I'll go through the process three times but I won't show you the whole process every single time because that's just gonna be boring okay so I've stamped using the glue on all three pieces of card and I'm just going to clean off my stamp to remove all the excess glue because you need to do that pretty quickly once you've finished with it to make sure the glue doesn't set in any of the nooks and crannies and then ruin your stamp Okay, so next is where the magic happens. Now that the glue has a chance to cure a little bit, I'm going to open up my pot of the Mega Flake, which is the Gilding Flake, and this colour is called Yorkshire Dales. I'm then going to take a large pinch of the Gilding Flake and just rub that over the top of the card, and the glue that I've stamped on there will collect the flake and hold it in place. So you can move it around and just rub that down until you're happy that you've got all of the flake covering all of the glue and just leave it loose and just burnish it as you can see with my fingers just to remove any of the excess around and to make sure that I've caught every last piece of glue and I'm going to do the same sort of thing on all three so I'm going to bring the second one now and then just use those leftover flakes and just attach those again to the glue that's on the card and then when I've run out I'm just going to grab some more from the pot and then just maneuver that over the card until I'm happy that I've got enough on and I'm going to do that to all three. Okay, so now that I've got all three of my sunflowers all covered in the gilding flake, I'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up and then bring them back in and then start to remove all the excess gilding flake. Now what I'm using here is called a scoochie, which is a mild abrasive sponge and all that does is it just removes all of the excess flake that isn't stuck down, relieving your stamped image in that gold and beautiful shimmering colour. I'm going to do that to all three. Just a side note, for those that are interested, the Indigo Blue Gilding Flakes come in 11 different colourways. I'm using the one called the Yorkshire Dales, but there are 10 other colours, including copper, there's a hot chocolate, there's a peacock, there's lots and lots of scrummy colours. So now that all three of my images are complete, I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm going to, on the first one, fussy cut all the way around the outside of the image. On the second one, I'm going to cut a, an internal um, section or internal row of the sunflower petals. And then on the third one, I'm just going to cut out the center of the sunflower, but I don't end up using that. Um, but at this point, I didn't know that.
So here you can see the three cutout pieces that I've done and I'm just taking some of the uh, Indigo Blue English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paint and this colour is called Hot Cocoa. There's definitely a chocolate thing going on here isn't there? And I'm just going to mix that with a little bit of water and I'm just going to paint the inside of the sunflower, um, well the centre of the sunflower. Um, just wanted to darken that up a little bit but I just didn't want to paint over it with the acrylic paint and leave it at that because I know that that's not going to show the the gilding flake through it so I'm adding the colour and then I'm just removing the top layer with a baby wipe which then leaves the sheen of that gilding flake underneath but then leaves a nice sort of um, darkish border all the way around. Now because that's my top layer, um, I didn't, like I say, I did do the centre section but I end up not using that. I wasn't really happy with the shape um, which is why I end up discarding it in the end. Um, but I don't do it on the bottom layer because that's going to be covered up by that, um, that more sunflower shaped one in the end. So I'm just going to bring the canvas back in now which is nearly dry and I'm just going to place all the layers on there just to see where they're going to best fit and trying to work out which way around that layer of petals actually goes in relation to the main image because I wanted to kind of line it up but then I suddenly realised that it actually it doesn't really matter. So now just using my fingers I'm going to tease um, and then adjust the petals and cut a little bit further in so that I can actually raise them up and twist them slightly just to make them more 3D and I will go into the base layer as well and start cutting some cuts into that or cutting some incisions into that so that I can also twist some of those petals up to make that sunflower a lot more 3D than it is already. So now that I'm happy with the shape of the sunflower, I'm just going to get some um, foam dots or some pop dots as people call them and I'm just going to stick that top layer down onto the base layer and then just tease up some of those petals to give it that real sort of 3D kind of um, effect on the actual sunflower to make it look a little bit more lifelike. So next I'm going to pop that to one side and bring out my stencil again and this time I'm going to lay it over the top and bring in the fat foam with the uh, flitter glue on it and I'm going to apply the flitter glue through the stencil um, on the top and around the sides and I'm also then going to bring the flake back in and add the gilding flake across the top of the raised embossed section on my canvas and I'm also going to add some of the gilding flake down the sides too and then as a final touch I'm going to bring in the texture stencil and use the the kind of bubbles part of the, ten, the stencil to add some more glue through and then I'm going to add the gilding flake to that too and then I'm going to leave it overnight. I didn't have to leave it overnight but it was actually getting quite late and I was getting a little bit tired and I was losing a little bit of focus so I decided to just leave it rest overnight and then come back to it the following day. So this is the point that I decided that I'd actually had enough and it was time to pack up and start again the next day. And here we are. And as sometimes happens, when you come back to it the next day, you look at it and you think, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And that's exactly what happened to me. So I brought out the hot cocoa 
and I'm going to paint the entire canvas over with the brown. I realised that the blue and the purpley colours just didn't gel properly with the yellow and orange of the sunflower so I decided to tone the background into it by adding those colours to the actual canvas itself. So I've covered the entire canvas with the hot cocoa which is the, the indigo blue English Cottage Artist acrylic paint and I've also got the burning bonfire back out and I'm just dry brushing across the top and across that stenciling just to try and um, lift that stenciling back to the foreground again and I'm only using light strokes uh, across it in a crosshatch kind of pattern and I'm a lot happier with it now that it's done there. So now that it's all dry and it's all toned down again um, it looks a lot better and the colours all make more sense when you look at them. So I'm going to pop that to one side and start on my next piece of embellishment for it. So again another piece of the five inch card and this time I'm going to bring out the post box red and the burning bonfire and I'm going to paint a piece of that card, the watercolour card again and try and blend those two colours together for my next little embellishment. So now that I'm happy with the colours with the, the reds and the oranges on that piece of card I'm just going to dry it with the heat tool and then I'm going to bring some of that burning bonfire and I'm going to drop it into this little bucket here and then I'm going to add some water and then just give it a mix up just to make it a little bit looser then I'm going to use a, um, a pipette and collect some of the runny blue, uh, runny blue the runny orange colour that's because the handle of the paintbrush is there, it's distracting me, there you go. And I'm going to bring the pipette and I'm going to create some drippage effect across the top of that piece of card. And when I'm happy with the drippage effect, I'm going to bring out the heat gun again and just give it a real good heat blast and and then I'm going to move on to the next step. So again this is the indigo blue English cottage artist acrylic paint in banana custard. And I'm just going to add a little bit onto my craft mat with a little bit of water and then I'm going to bring out my fan brush and I'm going to create some bright yellow splatters to go across the piece of card. And then just so I don't want to waste any of that lovely scrummy banana custard paint I'm going to bring the canvas back in and I'm also going to do the same thing across the canvas and down the sides. So when I'm happy with the amount of splattered and splashes that I've got with the banana custard across the canvas and on the piece of card, I'm just going to bring in the heat gun and give it a bit of a heat blast just to make sure it's all nice and dry before I move on to my next stage. So once again with the flitter glue and the fat foam I'm going to create a, a glue pad and I'm just going to work that glue into the foam just the way that I did previously. Now because this is a separate day uh, I could have used the one that I used the day before but because it's a separate day and I didn't uh, protect it, wrap it up in cling film or anything like that or shrink wrap um, it did actually dry out a little bit so I'm starting afresh with a new piece. So this time I'm using an indigo blue dinky butterfly or flutterby stamp and I'm going to use the glue pad and just put the glue onto the butterfly stamp like I did with the sunflower one the day before. I'm actually going to follow exactly the same process with the butterfly stamp that I did with the sunflower stamp yesterday and I'm going to use exactly the same colour of gilding flakes to make sure everything ties in 
together. So again, making sure once I've finished with the stamp that I give it a real good clean to make sure that I remove all of the glue from the stamp before I move on. You can leave the glue on the piece of card for a good hour or so before actually adding the gilding flake. So as I said, I'm going to follow exactly the same process. So taking a pinch of the gilding flakes and just lay that over the top of the stamped butterfly image and then just rubbing the flakes in with my finger and just burnish them around, moving them around to make sure that there's a real good coverage of the flake on that stamped image. And then I'm going to bring out the scoochie. So now that I'm happy with the butterfly image, I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to fussy cut the image of the butterfly out from the card. So I'll do a quick tidy up and then I'm going to bring back the canvas and then I'm going to position my sunflower and the butterfly on the canvas and then work out where I need to add some more of that gilding flake on the actual canvas itself just to create a little bit of a frame on those two exposed corners. And a little tip that I've discovered, if you're adding glue to a frame like this uh, or a canvas like this, is definitely let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes for the glue to start going tacky before adding your gilding flakes. Because while the glue is still wet, the uh, when you actually bring the scoochie on, then it does actually remove some of it. Uh, I was happy with the way it looked in the end, but I, it could have been better, let's put it that way. So now I'm just going to use some of the flitter glue onto the back of the sunflower, and I'm just going to stick that down in place on the canvas and do the same thing with the butterfly. And as you can see, at the back of that piece of card, I had another play with the gilding flag beforehand. Um, Looking at the canvas now, I've realised that oh, it could do with a little bit more embellishment, so I'm going to add some um, little self-adhesive pearls to the body of the butterfly. As sometimes happens when you're doing a lot of filming and editing, you sometimes occasionally lose a small piece of film. And that's what happened here. I actually can't find the piece of film where it shows where I added my two um, pieces of um, wordage. And all I did for those was printed out the words Summer's End using my Letra Tag label maker and then stuck them down onto the canvas and then painted over the top with some silks in ginger peach. And then to finish off all I've done is added borders to the, the word stickers with a food ball pen and I've just gone around the ends just adding that kind of sketchy border and that's the canvas completed. So I hope you've enjoyed watching my first play with the gilding flakes on film and that you've enjoyed the creative artist collaboration hashtag fall art and I hope if you want to see more of those videos you'll pop that hashtag into your Google search engine so you can search out all the other artists that are also participating in this collaboration so as I say that's all for me from now if you've enjoyed the video please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video it's all for me Thanks for watching, see you all again soon.